this hour that we read just a few minutes ago, we find David the Psalmist saying, and in the shadow of your wings I will hope until lawlessness shall pass away. In the shadow of your wings I will hope until the lawlessness shall pass away. This season is a season of preparation. And I'm not talk uh, talking about preparation for the Feast of Resurrection. But I'm talking about preparation for our entire life. This season the church repeats every year for us to remind us and to prepare us on how to face reality of this world. I hope you all have good time and good life, but I am sure some of us who are, who are with us tonight suffer from many problems, tribulations. Many of us might suffer from different re for different reasons, might feel despair, might feel lonely, might feel bullied. Maybe as a result of a broken relationship, or maybe a bad relationship with our parents, or for parents, a bad relationship with our children. Maybe a death of a dear friend or a loved family member. Maybe struggle with school, or this terrible feeling that you're gonna fail this year. Maybe struggle with some school mates who are bullying you. Maybe you're suffering because of this boy in your classroom or this girl in your classroom who are treating you bad or bullying you. Maybe you're suffering from a workmate or a boss at work who is dealing with you in a very rude way or undesirable way or disrespect. Worst of them all, maybe it's that terrible sin that you are struggling with and you think that you will never be able to get rid of. Maybe it's porn watching or vaping or smoking maybe even drugs, maybe lustful thoughts. All of these struggles we suffer from, at least one of them. As long as we live in this life, we will always have suffering and struggles. But the problem is sometimes we feel in despair. We feel that the situation that we are in will never change or we will never change, or our habits will never change. Or maybe we feel like this is the end of life and it's better even to end our lives because we cannot take it anymore. Some people do in despair because they don't have hope. But we do have hope. And the church prepares us during this particular week to prepare us to have hope and to equip us to have hope because we are different. We shouldn't ever, ever lose hope. We should never fall in despair because we have our God. Our God is a mighty God. Our God can get us surely out of it. Many people, when they fall in despair or they feel this uh, despaired situation, they retire to one of two ways. Some, they just uh, run away from difficulties, hide, try to hide from problems, not to face it and not to deal with it. Another group of people might actually get tempted by ignoring the problem altogether living in denial, pretend that there is no problem. But there is a third way, and this third way is surely how God would like to see us pursuing. 
This third way is the same way, the very same exact way that the Lord Jesus Christ did. And of course, David the prophet. Well, the church, it shows that particular verse in the psalm today as a sign, a type, or a symbol of the Lord Jesus Christ. Not only talking about David, but prophesizing about the agony, the pain, the despair that the Lord Jesus Christ went through before the cross, during that Passion Week. What did the Lord Jesus Christ do? Let's learn from him. He went to Gethsemane. He kneeled down. Although he is the one who doesn't need to pray, he is the almighty God himself. But everything that Jesus did, he did it for a purpose, and mainly to teach us to follow his footsteps. What would I do when I feel hopeless and helpless, and when I feel down, when I feel fear surrounding me, when I feel that I am trapped in the situation, what would I do? I learned from the Lord Jesus Christ. He went to the Garden of Gethsemane. He kneeled down and cried and asked for God's help. He cried so much, to the extent that his tears were going down as drops of blood on the earth. Do we do that instead of hiding from our problems or denying our problems and ignoring them? Why we don't get into our bedroom, kneel down, connect to God and tell him? We don't know the exact conversation of the Lord Jesus Christ with God the Father, but we know something. We know that he said to him, if it was possible that the cup of suffering be taken away. He asked him for that. Why would not do the same? We kneel down. We ask God's help. And we tell him, God, is it possible that this cup of suffering might be taken away? And wait for the answer. Wait for the answer and tell him, not my will, but yours. God will support you, will give you the strength. The pain of the cross was unbearable, so painful. But Jesus had all the power to carry this pain. How? By the power of God. By the support of God, he was able to go through it successfully. And then what? Then comes Sunday, resurrection, joy, glory. Do the same thing. Get into your knees when you have a problem that's surrounding you, suffocating you, feeling this is the end of the world for you. Get in your room, kneel down, pray to God who will hear you for sure. That's his promise to us. Let's cling into his promises. God keeps his words. He hears our prayers. We are so lazy to pray, but he's willing to listen. Let's take advantage of this opportunity. Let's put all our problems in his hands and let him deal with it. He's our father. He's our protector. He loves us so much. He will do whatever it takes to comfort us. He's there to comfort us, to support us, and to give us the power. But we have to go to him. Jesus himself, although he is the Son of God, went to him, giving us an example of how to deal with problems when they're overwhelming, when they're too big to handle or to deal with. Go to God. He will support you, and he will bring Sunday to your life. Don't ever think that the cross is the end. The cross is never the end in the life of any Christian unless he gives up. He gives up hope. Go to God. Ask him for help. He will provide you help. That's the key for success. The key for hope. The key for overcoming all our problems. Pray to all those who 
cause hurt in your life by name. Every one of them by name. This little boy who's giving you a hard time at school, write his name and pray for him constantly. This girl who's mocking you and making fun of you and the style of your hair and your makeup and your body shape or whatever, write her name down and pray for her. And you will feel good about it. You will feel so good about it when you pray for people who give you trouble, when you pray for people who hurt you. This situation that's overwhelming, write it down. Put it on the altar. Pray for it every night in your room. Surrender it to God to handle it, to deal with it. God, this is yours to deal with it. It's not mine. The war is yours. The confrontation is yours. The glory also is yours. And I will share the glory with you. And I will share the resurrection with you. How can we share the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ? Not by buying new clothes and stuff. It's good. Buy, go ahead. Buy new clothes and have a feast. That's a, not a problem. But more importantly is to feel the power of the resurrection, not the despair of the cross. To feel the glory of the resurrection, not the humiliation of the cross that we are carrying here on earth. And here is something that's guaranteed. You will always carry a cross. You will never be able to escape the cross. And you'll never be able, no matter what, you'll never be able to deny the cross in your life. It will be always there. But I'm not saying this to scare you. I am saying this because you have to have faith and hope that after each cross, there is, yes, what do you think? There is what? Resurrection. After every cross, there is resurrection. So don't mind to carry the cross with Jesus. And don't mind to go to the Gethsemane, the Garden of Gethsemane with him. Kneel down with him. Cry with him. Get crucified with him, knowing that it is always hope in the shadow of the Lord Almighty to give you resurrection from the pain and the situation you're in, even death. Glory be to God forever and ever. Amen.